ACIM Resurrection, the true meaning. In this video, I'm going to talk about the idea of the resurrection from the spiritual perspective of A Course in Miracles, ACIM for short, to hopefully help bring some clarity and a broader perspective to those who might be wondering about the subject or feeling stuck about it because they're only able to think of it in one particular way. But first, I'm going to talk about resurrection, generally speaking, and then religiously speaking, from the biblical perspective. Hi, I'm Nikki from HereToWakeUp.com, and I help people stay accountable and connected to Divine Spirit on their awakening journey. I've been spiritually awakened for 15 years now, self-realized for 10, and I'm here to help and to be of service to kind-hearted souls that are ready to progress. So if that's you, welcome to my channel, The Healthy Wealthy Recluse. Welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. Make yourself at home. And I also want to say thank you so much to my new subscribers. I really appreciate you. On this channel, I make videos about spiritual wealth, healing, and relationships. So if you find that you like it here, let me know in the comments and consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Even dislikes help the channel. So thank you so much for watching all of this video. And now, ACIM Resurrection, the true meaning. And I wanted to talk about resurrection in today's video because of the timing since Holy Week and Easter just recently passed and the resurrection is very much on my mind right now, even more than it usually is. So let's go. When we think about what the word resurrection actually means, one way to look at it is like a figure of speech where it's just about bringing back something that once was or used to be and then for whatever reason it wasn't and you know you can apply this to many you know general things like social codes right or ways of doing things uh, relationships qualities characteristics like if you can think about some of the things you used to do when you were younger or in a different stage of your life when you were happier or you know you had certain qualities that maybe got shut down for whatever reason or you know relationships you used to have that you know maybe fell by the wayside or got put on pause temporarily all of these things have the potential to be resurrected at some point like depending on the situation they all have the ability to undergo a resurrection so to speak so you know that's one way to look at the concept. Uh, looking at it religiously and historically, resurrection is basically defined as the literal physical phenomenon of being raised from the dead and then, you know, living again. And several different religions talk about this, including that of ancient Egypt. And of course, um, it's most well known as coming from, you know, Christianity and the Bible, where there are several resurrection stories, most notably Yeshua's, of course, you know, the main reason for Easter. And then there's the final resurrection that's also talked about in the Bible as well. And speaking of, you know, resurrection stories, in the Lazarus resurrection story, the Bible quotes Yeshua as saying, I am the resurrection and the life. And those of us, you know, with eyes to see and ears to hear, we recognize the symbolism that's at play. And we know that when he says this, he's not talking about his three-dimensional personal self, you know, an image. He's talking about his true self, his Christ self, his true spiritual identity which is our spiritual identity as well, and is also known, you know, by, you know, different names. Some people say higher self, highest self, inner being, and of course, the I am presence. And this brings me to the perspective of A Course in Miracles, ACIM, which to me is a more spiritual and universal work that actually addresses the true meaning of the resurrection 
at the deepest level, you know, in a pretty clear way. So what does the Course say about the resurrection? So one of the things that the Course says, and I'm going to quote from the version that's published by the Foundation for Inner Peace, and in the text in chapter 11, in um, line six of the first paragraph, which is in section six, it says, the resurrection is the complete triumph of Christ over the ego, not by attack, but by transcendence. And there's a lot of wisdom in that line that I want to talk about. But just to first kind of take a look at things overall, we can see how while the Bible sees the resurrection as Christ overcoming physical death, A Course in Miracles goes deeper and sees it as Christ overcoming the ego. Now, for those that may be unfamiliar with the Course, the ego the Course is referring to isn't the psychological ego that you might be thinking of. It's something much deeper. And I talk about that a little bit in part two of my video, The Insecure Ego. And it's part of the video that's about being emotionally volatile and why some people are like that. So you can check that out if you like by clicking the I card if you're watching. You know, just make sure that you come back and finish watching the rest of this video when you're done watching that one. Or you can just, you know, if you're not looking at the screen right now and you're just listening and enjoying the audio, then you can just um, search, you know, the channel whenever you're ready. Um, And of course, another alternative, check out the course yourself, which I would suggest doing, especially if you're really serious about your spiritual journey and if you feel guided to do so, because I really don't think the course is something for people who aren't really serious. And even if you are serious, but let's say like you're a beginner, like you just decided that you're going to be on the spiritual journey and I mean, do people really just decide that they're going to be on a spiritual journey or, you know, I don't think you just decide. I think it's decided for you. But let's just say you just started. I don't think that the course is a book for beginners. I think it might be a bit much, but honestly, you know, that's just in my opinion. I'm really only speaking for myself because like for me, the course didn't even really come into my experience until several years after I had already had my spiritual awakening experience and, you know, kind of popped myself out the matrix you know, so to speak, you know, it showed up for me as an answer to this energy that I had been expressing for a while. And, um, I really don't think I would have known what to do with it had I come across it any earlier or especially before I even had my awakening. But again, that's just me, you know, people are different and, you know, you never know, you might, it might be the first spiritual text that you ever touch and you might resonate with it and know what to do with it. I don't know. I'm just saying. You know, I'm just saying. Speaking of that, I think I'm probably going to make a video about spiritual books and, you know, maybe resources or whatever that have been helpful for me on my journey. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, make sure you subscribe so you can get the notifications about that. But anyway, um, back to the topic of this video, ACIM resurrection, the true meaning. And I was talking about how the course sees the resurrection as Christ overcoming the ego. And in the next video, I'm going to elaborate on this quote, why it's so deep and so wise. And I'm also going to talk about why it's even important to know this. Like, why do we need to know the true meaning of the resurrection? Like, why is that even important? So stay tuned for part two of this video. Thank you so much for watching and listening. I really appreciate your time and your attention because you could literally be doing anything else right now. So I really appreciate that. Remember to love yourself because that's the real wealth. Take care.